Rosemary had this idea that I could, that we, um, that a small group of us could have a casual dinner at the saloon tomorrow night to celebrate. Oh. 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 What? Allie's throwing a surprise party. It, not that I've heard. Oh, you're just gonna get a small group of people together for dinner at the saloon? It's happening. Uh, Nathan's first reaction is, hey bro, I thought you were in Capital City. What's going on here? <laughs> hey, um, I was, I, I think, you know, I, I <laughs> he knows that Elizabeth and Lucas have history, have been together, you know, beforehand and all the, all the fun stuff that happened in season eight between uh, the two of them. So seeing him, you know, kind of, and in a way, kind of crashing Nathan's party, you know, because I believe they're all singing, he's a good, jolly good fellow, and it's like, oh, here they go again. Oh, go back in and shake some babies and kiss some hands. And and then goes inside, and there's, there's the man of the hour, Mr. Lucas Bouchard. And, you know, I think... I, I I think he's a little trepidatious moving forward now with Elizabeth. He doesn't know what's going to happen now that Lucas is, is back in, in the battle. Well, I mean, I can't spoil too much, but I, I it's it's pretty clear based on the last you know five seasons that Nathan has been on the show that you know he there's a very soft spot in Nathan's heart for, for Elizabeth. And I think he's trying to see where he stands after kind of opening himself up to her in season eight and kind of getting rejected for reasons I think we'll find out as we move along. Um, and, you know, he just doesn't, you know, he's got this great friend now and he doesn't want to kind of screw anything up. He's kind of in this like awkward situation where, you know, he, I think he'd be open for more if she was open for more, but he doesn't want to ruin anything by saying the wrong thing, which, you know, sometimes Nathan does. Well, I mean, I, I think so. I think he's ready to be with her. Yeah. And he, he doesn't know if she's ready to be with him. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, right now, especially after the first episode, Nathan, you know, he's been away for a while with, um, you know, kind of been on the investigation of, of who shot uh, the governor. And, you know, the case is closed, even even though he doesn't uh, believe that it's been closed properly. Um, so, you know, there, there's, there's been some distance between the two of them since they last kind of talked. They had that kind of, you know, at the voting booth, things were a little awkward because Nathan before the voting booth, you know, Nathan really kind of questioned Elizabeth and what she wanted and, you know, where she saw herself. And so since then, you know, they, they really haven't spoken too much. And it's, it's, it's evident that Nathan, or that Elizabeth means a great deal to Nathan. Um, and I think they're just finding their footing in this kind of new world that is Hope Valley. Nathan is as much as he can be, but Bill won't let it go. So he's the one that's pushing for, you know, we should do something about this. And Nathan has got his hands tied because his uh, superior officer has kind of shut down his request to keep the case open. So they come up with this plan that, you know, Bill's the old curmudgeon Mountie that can just like open up the case purely for interest. And, uh, and I think he's going to keep the ball rolling on this thing. He's not He's not going to just just kind of go, go along with... Um, what he thinks is a, is a false accusation. Well, yeah, I mean, that's his, I mean, I, what he considers, I think he's, you know, he's there to protect the governor, of course, that's his job. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think, <laughs> in that moment specifically in season, in episode two, I don't think that case is going through his head at the moment. I think he's just thinking, "Oh, Lucas is back. This is this is going to be great with uh, with what I think might be <laughs> happening with Elizabeth." Um, so, in that moment, which you know ends ends the episode, um, yeah, 
his profession is not on his mind at that at that moment. Let's just say. Well, I think we'll see going forward. You know, I think Lucas has got his hands tied with um, other matters of government. Um, it really is up to the people that want to keep this case alive. Um, you know, kind of in the back door, um, which is where kind of Bill and Rosemary come into play. Where you know we got this investigative um, investigative journalist, you know, Rosemary, and we've got this um, retired police officer with nothing better to do except I mean, he's got a lot to do. <laughs> he's kind of the active acting mayor is right now. He runs a restaurant. And he, he's, a, he's a judge. He's got a lot going on. His, but for whatever reason, he can he can put all that aside and. Uh, you know, and, and kind of get to the bottom of, of exactly what, what happened with that accusation. Um, Nathan gives as much as he can without kind of crossing the line that his superior kind of put in front of him. We'll see as this moves along, just like, you know, when this actually, when he might join them fully. But uh, as of right now, you know, Lucas uh, is the governor and he's the boss and, you know, he's he's got, he's, he's got other things that he's doing and, and it's, it's Nathan's job to, uh, to do what he says, whether he likes it or not. She is very persistent, you know, and they, they make a great uh, pair. It was one of the more fun things to read um, in season uh, 11. So I think, of course, Nathan would rather be working with Bill on this. Um, you know, he... He believes, just like Bill does, that there's something fishy going on, you know, that, that this guy might not be the guy that that, that shot Lucas Richard. Um, but yeah, of course, he wants to be there to help out. He just, his, his hands are kind of tied, really. No, well, I think at the very beginning, he's, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't like birthdays and like attention and you know, he gets the idea that Allie's going to be throwing him this surprise birthday. And then I think he kind of like takes that in as like, you know what? I could do this. I think this will be really fun. And he gets really excited only to realize that there is no birthday for him, um, which is quite sad, um, you know, and uh, he thinks he's kind of being let down. I remember as it moves on. That's the comedy of, of the episode. Um, but of course, yeah, at the beginning, Nathan is not one for attention. He doesn't, he said before, he doesn't like crowds. Um, doesn't like it, the attention on him. Um, and just when he kind of opens his heart to, to the idea of a birthday party, it's crushed. So he thinks, so he thinks. You know, well, it, it, it's, it, there's a lot of obstacles kind of going on, you know, it, it, it's, it brings us back a little bit to, to uh, some of the elements that were around in season eight. Um, I don't think Nathan has as much to worry about as, as he thinks he does as, as we move forward with this. Um, you know, but he really doesn't know, you know, like he was, you know, he let that go and he tried to move on unsuccessfully with, with um, other people. And, uh, you know, and now he finds himself kind of back in the ring with, with, you know, the person that he has confessed his love to. And, you know, her ex, um, fiance is is still in town and um, you know and, and also like Nathan and Lucas were, were you know they were getting as close as they've ever been as well you know and on top of that Lucas is his boss so there's a lot kind of going on you know professionals and personal wise in, um, in Nathan's life right now I mean I know where his heart is I don't want to say anything we're only in the second episode right now um but yeah, you know, he's got a he's got a sense of duty for sure and a professionalism. So things might get a bit messy. And uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and find out. Near the end, there's a very big um, episode with uh, with uh, Jada's character, Allie. Um, there's a lot of good stuff uh, with, with Nathan and Allie um, this year. And, uh, you know, it, it, a lot of it, I mean, we kind of teased it in the first episode, but a lot of it is is Allie's growing up and kind of not becoming the fun kid that, well, I mean, she's still fun, but not becoming, you know, the little buddy that that your child, you know, you, you, when you've got a toddler, when you've got, you know, a younger a younger child and like they're your friend and then they start meeting other, other people and they want to go play with them and you're kind of like pushed to the side and, you know, he's, he's going through that a little bit. Um, 
you know, she's also a teenager full of hormones and we'll see, you know, you, when a parent knows best too, at a couple things as well. And it's, it, you know, Nathan really tries to help her out, even though I don't think she sees, you know, that these are, I mean, I, I'm trying not to give away any, <laughs> anything moving forward, but th there are things where, you know, a parent knows best, he tries to help her out. She doesn't think, she doesn't see it as bad and she gets quite angry at him. And, you know, there's, there's just kind of heartbreaking things coming up with those two. Um, yeah, I, I'll kind of say that. Yeah, I mean, he he always leans on Elizabeth. I mean, that's that's been their, their through line for the entire time. You know, they've been characters on the show together. That's what they share. Um, and yeah, of course, she's Elizabeth is a big part of this certain story that um, she helps uh, Nathan out with and, and Allie as well. But but it's uh, it's really um, it's a beautiful episode, and and Jada really did like a marvelous job. On it. Well, I mean, to tell you the truth, the biggest one is who shot Lucas Bouchard. Um, that is. That's the biggest one. I mean, Nathan's, Nathan's got his own personal stuff kind of going on a lot this season. Um, he does eventually move into uh, some mounty business. Um, but a lot of it at the beginning um, is dealing with things that he didn't see coming. A lot of, there's a, a lot, in, in season 11, there's a lot of people from the past that, that show up in, uh, in Hope Valley. People that we've heard about, people that maybe we've already seen, people that we've never seen before. Um, and you know, Nathan gets involved in a lot of those storylines as well. So um, yeah, without giving too much away there, the Mountie business does come, um, but for a little while, it's just kind of a bit more personal on, on, on in Nathan's life. Let's say each one tests Nathan in a different way. Um, you know, there, there's one that comes back that uh, it, it comes to light, that um, kind of moves the investigation with Lucas forward. Um, there's one person that comes into Nathan's life that he's never met before, but uh, Elizabeth has a past with, and uh, it draws them closer together, Nathan and Elizabeth. And there's another one that comes in that uh, I, I think is it's, it's a big one for for Nathan to meet and. Um, yeah, I, something, so a character comes in that shares a connection with Elizabeth and Nathan together, and it's important that Nathan is liked by this person. You know, what's been so fun in the last little while is, is the time that I've got to be Nathan and really kind of let him evolve from who he was when he first showed up in the town to, you know, where he is now. He's, he's much more open. He's, he, he feels more at home at, at Hope Valley than he did when he first showed up. Um, he, he really feels like a, like a, a member of the community, you know? It, a lot, for a long time, it was like kind of Nathan and Bill, and, you know, Bill, I'd say Bill is Nathan's best friend. Um, yeah, best adult friend. I mean, Allie is always Nathan's kind of rock. Um, but, you know, he's, he's really kind of, let himself be more open to a lot of things in the town, a lot of people in the town. You know, when I first got cast as them, they, they really wanted a very stoic Mountie character. And I think, you know, it, it did what it was supposed to do for the first couple of seasons. But, you know, like anybody in a town, you know, after the years of being there, you kind of start opening yourself up to new opportunities and you meet new people. And and I've got to do that with Nathan. And he's, he's you know, he's more jovial for sure. Um, he's still got the, the sternness in him, but he's he just has really found a lovely home, I think, at, in Hope Valley. And, um, you know, based on that speech as well that he made in season 10, you know, he's just so grateful to be there and just so happy to be part of the community. So that, that just only grows for him, gets stronger. Yeah.